The Jacob Media Sports Network, in partnership with 97.3 ESPN, brings you the Mays and Aton Show. Middays with Harry Mays and Aton Shander. Now, it's the Midday Show with Harry Mays and Aton Shander on 97.3 ESPN Radio. Well, I'm, I'm glad you made it, Harry, because I, I'm hearing that a lot of the current employees at 97.3 ESPN are having difficulties, at the very least, getting it there. You did not step on a snake this morning, correct? No, I did not step on any snake. The and hell I did do not, we live? I did not lose any phones, uh, but I, it's mayhem down at the, at the mothership. Ever today. since you've been there. Yeah. I was there Monday, too. Last week at this time, I was there. Ever since you stayed down there and showed up, you've left a trail of destruction and chaos. Right, you know and all that? I do is show up on time well, for everything. Yes, sir. Do all my of, job, and I leave. That's the thing is you must uh, – I, I don't know what it is that you did, but your appearance has now turned this entire station on into – On a tear. Mosher stepping on snakes? Yes. How the hell is this possible? I don't know. I was more shocked that he's out there on a daily run. Then they were stepping on snakes. It was during a run? Yeah. Congrats oh to Jeff Mosher. Well, that's really breaking. Seriously. That's the breaking news. <laughs> right. You I buried the lead. <laughs> Shame on me. Mosher's running. He's, he's doing something for fitness. And you're talking about some snake. Who cares? Well, I, I mean, listen, I want to make sure that the All In podcast is up at a normal time when people expect it. And I'm told that it, it was a oh. Mosher Rothstein production. Oh, here. man. Last week when I was there, I, I forget if it was Monday or Tuesday. Um, they were supposed to record it, and somebody supposed they're both supposed to be there at X amount of time. They're both an hour, half hour late. One's forty five minutes late. They just come straggling in off the street whenever they damn well please. Oh, it's amazing. It's just, it's just no accountability. Well, well, that sounds like you're talking about Gil. I'm there. just saying that's not fair. I man. mean, I would take a flamethrower to that place. Well, may- maybe Gil's just slowly taking notes. Oh yeah, you know, he's building his case. That's what the old PD used <laughs> yeah, to do. Yeah, exactly right. Just put it in a file. Yeah, next thing you know, that file sitting in front of you, <laughs> as far as a booklet, and you're right. like, well, you've been building. If I had known you've been building that right. for the last two years, I would have acted differently. Right, exactly. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, now where to begin? Because because locally, we've got news here. Just mayhem in the NFL. Seriously, the, the defensive line is decimated. Tim Jernigan out for the rest of the year. You know, we'll talk about that and where the line is now and the Eagles are, but also out for the rest of the year. I thought it was oh, no, 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 indefinitely, no, 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 right? No, no. He's out. He's going to be out. He's got a broken foot, but it doesn't require uh, six surgery, weeks. so it's going to be a probably five to six weeks. All right, we'll, I'll say six. Okay. And then we'll see how that goes from there. But he's out at, He's out a chunk there of the season. a lot season. of foot injuries with our tackles. Yeah. You notice that? I mean, Fletcher I Cox that. Malik has Jackson, right? with a foot. Malik Jackson had the, that, that whatever that stupid thing is that uh, has, has torn up a lot of people's uh, feet over the years. Eagles related, too. So he's out for the year. I forget even what, it, what it's called. What is it called? Plantar fasciitis? What is is that what it is? No, I think it's something else. Are you talking about the actual injury? Yeah, the actual injury. Anyway, he's gone for the year. And now you got uh, Tim Jernigan with a, with a broken Oh, it's foot. the Liz Frank. List Frank. Right. Yeah, that that's it. Yeah. Not Ruben Frank. No, not Ruben List Frank. List Frank, yes. Although Ruben was a runner. Or he's a runner. So I, I don't know. I mean, don't runners usually get the List Frank injury? Wait a second. Ruben's a runner? I'm telling you, man. I, I used to see, uh, yeah. What, a runner at a restaurant? No, I'm, I'm telling you. What are we talking about I'm, I'm just saying. All, all right. right. Anyway, but my point of it being is that uh, I don't know. I, I thought that the Liz Frank injury you get from a lot of running. Well, yeah, people tend to run. Okay. They get it. Okay. Yeah, I, I hear you. So right. that <laughs> we've got Matt Lombardo at one o'clock. He called this thing. He called it right. on this show. Correct. A couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, at least two weeks ago he called it. It was before the season. Yeah. Because you and I had sort of looked at the Giants' schedule, and we both agreed that probably the Arizona game would be the game where it would most fit if Eli and the Giants got yep. off to a bad start. Sort of a, a soft launch, if you will, against Arizona. And he said, oh, no, guys, I, I'm thinking they lose. If they lose to Buffalo, because they're going to lose to Dallas. Yeah, Buffalo And if they lose the at one. home to Buffalo, and it's bad, I can see Daniel Jones getting the starting nod against Tampa. And sure enough, that's what's going to happen. All right, and I wonder though, how much did Buffalo like Buffalo's two and zero? They're they're not 
the Miami Dolphins. They're not a bad football team. No, they're pretty good. Yeah, and the conversation you're getting now on Twitter, and and I'm not using that as the only barometer here, but the conversation you're getting is, and this is how it's been for the last year, year and a half, well, it's not Eli's fault, it's not Eli's fault, what do you expect him to do with whoever's around him, fill in the blank. But when you draft somebody like Daniel Jones that high, and you know that Eli Manning is out, this is just a matter of time. So right. if it was week seven or week three, it was inevitable. It was to going happen. to happen. Right. Now, I did see Mark Erne, Erne, pardon me, who is a, an anchor for CBS Sports Radio or, or CBS Radio, and he does 1010 up in CBS. 1010 uh, wins? He does, right. Uh, Mark Erne tweeted this out earlier this morning, and I saw it, and I wonder where you stand on this. I'm going to ask Matt Lombardo this question right away as soon as we get on. What's going on with Trebek? Is he okay? Nothing. Okay, I saw Alex Trebek as, as the number one. I, I, listen, Cokie Roberts passed away, rest in peace. I was making sure that everything's okay with Trebek, all right? Yeah, okay. Erne brought up, what if right now, especially this was before the announcement of Daniel Jones, mind you, before they came out and said Jones will start, why not trade Eli Manning to the Jets? Is this before Simeon messed up his ankle? No, no, this is night? after, this is early this morning, okay. like 5 a.m. All right. And I saw Erne tweet this, and I thought, you know what? It actually makes sense. You can still retire technically at home. You don't have to go. You're not banished to Jacksonville or some other godforsaken place on the planet. Why not ride it out? The Jets need you. They need you. I don't know. I don't, because the Jets already have who they deem as their franchise quarterback. The problem is is he's got mono, and they don't know when he's going to be able to come back. Hey, They've already got a franchise quarterback. But Eli's only going to be around for another year anyway. And then, and, and you know what? Here's what I do. If I'm Eli Manning and I want to continue to play quarterback in the NFL, Harry, I say I'll go to the Jets because at the very least I can showcase for maybe a month. And I actually have a running back that I can play with. I know he had He's one. He's got one into his own team. But the line is better in New York. And, God, you know, even the receivers right now are, are, are pretty bad. Yeah, the Jets stink. The defense is better. The defense looked okay. Significantly even better. Even without uh, right. their best player on it. But still, they're, they're, they're going nowhere. They're on their way to another four-win season probably. Well, no, I don't think they would be that bad if Darnold was healthy. I don't think well, they would not. Be. No, and that's why you bring it, Eli Man. Okay, at the very least, we can discuss it, see what happens yeah, with we'll Lombo. Yeah, we'll ask Lombo. We'll open it up to you now. We're live, not only listening on 97.3 ESPN, but the app, 97.3 ESPN.com, and on all the platforms, at Harry Mays TU, Twitter, Periscope, Aton Shander on Facebook, and our Mays and Aton channel before, on Twitch. Before we get to you know dive into the real Eagles stuff, Schefter tweeted this a little while ago, and it's pretty amazing. It just in the last couple of hours, basically, two days worth, 48 hours or whatever it is, Daniel Jones is now the starting QB for the Giants. Eli is out. Minka Fitzpatrick oh, requested a trade one. and got traded, apparently, to Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah. for a first-round pick. Jalen Ramsey is going off in Jacksonville, and he is requesting a trade. He doesn't want to play for the the Jacksonville Jaguars anymore. Big Ben is now on IR for the rest of the year, and Drew Brees is out for six weeks. Oh, my goodness. Is this nuts? This is just week two. I'm trying to remember the last time the NFL was down. And, again, not everybody you mentioned is integral and essential. And I I feel like we've lost Aaron Rodgers before. We've lost guys before. This isn't the first time. But I, I'm trying to remember in such a short period of time the names that you just laid out at the quarterback position. And I'm not even mentioning Luck, who retired that's true. That's right true. before the no, season no, Matt, no, I think that's a good one. Yeah. To, you have to throw you him in there as well. In. Right. Yeah. This has been a, a level of insanity with guys going down. And Foles got hurt. That's right. Foles got hurt, too. I mean, yeah, you have to factor in week one. Jeez. Cam Newton, you know. Not at practice today. Yeah, he's not practicing today. Who knows what's going on there? He's definitely not 100%. It's just crazy. It really is. And then I start looking at the Eagles, and, you know, we we had Doug Peterson's press conference yesterday, and he didn't know anything about any of the medical stuff. He didn't know anything about anything yesterday. But as it's coming out out later now, we're, we're starting to get a little bit clearer picture. But it's clear as mud because nobody knows really if any of these guys the soft tissue guys are going to be able to play against Detroit this week well the the factor that I think everybody needs to look at is you're not dealing with two games in the normal stretch you're dealing with two games in 10 days three games in 12 days you had Atlanta 
you have Detroit, and then you have Green Bay on a Thursday night. They're going through this stretch right now. Well, Where seven, right. You've got three games in 12 right, days. Right, that, which, which is and a – two of them on the road against good teams. So One it, you've already lost. Yeah, and, and now that you're dealing with the soft tissue injury after the first game, you have to look at now and say, is it really worth it? Like, if I'm looking at the next two games, I'm probably going to keep if – I, if I am looking at getting guys back, I'm not going to – split workload, and I'm not going to get a guy who's 70% out there against Detroit. I'm probably going to sit him against Detroit so he can play in Green Bay. Is that what you're thinking? Like, do we try to cobble together a win with Ortega Whiteside and Mac Hollins getting a full week's worth of practice as the number one wide receiver tandem with Carson Wentz and try to win that game at home, and then hopefully you get the other guys back for Thursday night in Green Bay. You're going to need them. Let's assume all three of the guys are out, Goddard, Jackson, and Jeffrey. And the Goddard thing is an aggravation of a previous injury. Right. Which, again, mind-boggling that they didn't bring anybody else on the team, on the trip, whatever. That's, that's the side now. We're past that. But the point remains, Harry, if all three are out and you're going to make this decision today on a Tuesday, you have now three – you have a week. I know it's not an off-season week, but you have a week to implement a game plan with guys out there. And if you're not good enough, if this Philadelphia Eagles team is not good enough to A def- – and I'm – Fully confident that Doug Peterson can devise a game plan. But I'm saying, if they're not competent enough, good enough, to devise a game plan and then execute it with Wentz, Ertz, Aguilar, the running backs, the offensive line, right? Everybody that's not a starter, right, right, that would be in there, then we need to seriously, seriously change the parameters of the conversation with this Eagles team. And that's not a total shot at Detroit. No, it's not. but But, I mean, let's be honest, this is a better football team than Detroit. Yes, it is. Absolutely. And, you know, Stafford did not look particularly great against uh, Los Angeles last week. They got the win. Uh, You know, Los Angeles Chargers missed two field goals, and then Rivers throws a pick in the final minute or so driving. Right. Where if they would have made any of those those field goals, that game was already tied. I mean, they they never have a kicker, the Chargers. They're just kind of a disaster that way. But bottom line is they got away with the win. Stafford threw two picks. He didn't look, you know, Dominant. Correct. Okay. But so, I think that was more of a testament to just how poorly, I don't want to say terrible, but just under the under par the Chargers were playing on the road, which you called. Yeah. But that they I would agree struggle with on the you. road. They should be able to beat Detroit at home, even if they don't have Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey. Correct. They should. It's Correct. not going to be pretty. No, It'll but, probably be ugly, but who cares? Just get the win. Yeah, but I don't even know, and, and I understand where you're coming from. I don't disagree with you where it probably, like, I wouldn't hold them accountable if they started the first quarter or quarter and a half or even the first half a little slow to kind of get acclimated, but I would expect them to be able to put up some points. Like, at the end of that game, if they're winning 13-6, to six, then, you know, there's a problem. <laughs> that, that's all I'm saying. At the end of the game? Yeah, like I, I think they should be able to put up points against Detroit, despite not having Alshon. See, I'm and not Deshaun. even asking for that. Just win it. Just I don't win care. it. I don't care how ugly it is. Just get the win, and then hopefully you get some of these guys back for Thursday night. Because I'm starting to think about, I think about this stuff way too early, way earlier than most people. But they start out this season with road games. They've already lost one in Atlanta to an NFC playoff type team at Green Bay, playoff type team at Minnesota playoff type yeah. team then you got dallas on you know on the road you got that minnesota dallas buffalo scenario of three straight road games and then you get the bears it's true. at home it's true. so it's... until they get to the bye with all these injuries they got to be able to scratch out you know they got to be able to win one of the two games on the road against green bay or minnesota i'm not asking for both they got to win one of the two and then you get dallas it's true. By the time you hit Dallas, you have to be healthy. This football team in Dallas will be cruising by then. Yeah, because they started off, you know, very with, slow with, with a, as far as tough with opponents. With a pretty soft schedule, right. and then they get New Orleans without Breeze. Correct. Which is again going to be. I don't care who the quarterback is. It's well, it'll be, be Bridgewater unless he gets hurt. Then maybe you can send Eli to New Orleans. <laughs> there you go. We can ask Matt about that. Right. Sending Eli to New Orleans or anywhere else. All right. At Harry Mays to you at Shander Show. We'll get to the text board coming up. 609-403-0973. Uh, two quick things uh, to slide in here. And nothing is ever quick, of course, on this show. But no. 
last night, you and, and this was funny because we were going back and forth, and you you actually had the right to, right move, which was to opt out immediately, right? Oh, there's our old buddy uh, Jordan Renan on uh, ESPN. Are you talking about a group text? Yeah. So yeah. there was this group thing, right? And I was thinking, all right, let's just get it, it was my way to fish. Right, right. right. Fish yeah, right I know. Now. So we sent it out to everybody involved down there. And, you know, a couple people just stopped responding. So I'm already out on Hunter today. I'm out on you today. Like, yes. I'm out on a couple well, people. Well, I responded, though. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm more out on guys like Brody who just, like, bounced on the chain for some reason. Uh, in fact, Josh, I'll, another I'll, one who's working you what I I said. that. Let, let's go through what I said. Well, you, you got out of that, right? Yeah. While you find that text, let me get to the other one, all right? right? The other thing I was going to mention is people better – I, I want to do this every Thursday with you until you get sick and freaking tired of it, and I don't think you will. What, the DraftKings? Yeah. No, we're, I'm into it. We picked a winner this week. A winner? Week. That, that's an understatement. There were uh, – one of these lineups came in top ten. Is that right? In, like, one of the – one over a thousand – How many nearly, different contests did you put it in? I played it in nine – now, again, it's different entry fees. You right, know, a dollar, right. three dollars. One was $33 entry free uh, – entry fee, pardon me, that was able to make back at least double that money. Mm -hmm. But the nine – so I, I spent about $60 – on that lineup. On entry fees. On entry okay. fees. And that lineup that you, me, Josh, and the listeners via the text board gave us netted, well, it, it gained $520. So you subtract the 68 or so, $70. So you made over 450 460 bucks. All I did was play the lineup that we created. Yeah. I, I didn't change anything. Right. That was it. So I want to do this every week and, and see. Now, again, if people out there want to match their lineups with us, we'll do this on Thursday because we need to incorporate Thursday night football. But since Monday night ended and Beckham having that night last night, yeah. which leads me which, to the second thing. I, we thought he would go off. Absolutely. The Not, return. I wasn't Greg expecting Williams. that great one-handed catch oh he made goodness. on the sideline. And then he scored a touchdown in the, in the second half, right? Correct. Two. Which I didn't see. Right. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I'm glad you brought that up. Because initially the plan was to create this group text slash, like, God forbid, shows on this channel interact with each other on social media and, and like, text off the air off some a after some contrived for crossover that's only three minutes. You know, like, God forbid we do something like that. So I figured, you know, let me throw that out there, see if we can come up with a bet. Yeah. And you were out immediately. Well, you said we should determine a bet tonight, preferably a prop bet. Right. Then all and all get in on the action, even if it's five bucks. LOL. The amount of money isn't the point. More so, all of us going back and forth on social about a specific bet. And I go, I don't want to go back and forth with anyone on social. Right. That was my response. Yeah. And I I'm couldn't. Out. I couldn't remove you because there are non iPhone users on that chain. So I had How to tell. How dare they? Well, I had to tell you to remove yourself. Yes, I which could. I'm, <laughs> Which you probably couldn't either could. because of the damn non i Gil yes. and others, right? Josh not using the iPhone. So at that point, I created a new chain because right. I knew, like, you know. But, of course, Rothstein and Mosher keep texting that chain well, even though I created a new hold one. Hold on, though, because yeah, Mosher chimed in. He goes, I'll get in, but I'm likely off the grid tonight. And I says, I love being off the grid. So then a, a number that I didn't recognize, I don't have in my phone, right. part of the chain, right. goes, I live off the grid. <laughs> I said, I don't even know who you are. And then he hit you with a Bruno. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, who was that? That's Rothstein. Rothstein. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put his name in my phone. Th there you go. <laughs> See, now I'm introducing people. I'm connecting people. I'm bridging. I love it. So you were out, and then it took about all of two and a half hours to finally decide on a stinking prop bet. And, you know, I'm in PA. These guys are in Jersey. Yeah, it's so confused. It's crazy. Now, luckily, I was doing the show with Tony McMullen and Colin Thompson last night at Landmark in right. Jersey. So I was able to do a Team Jersey thing. And we finally decided at plus 650, Odell Beckham, two touchdowns, Browns win as a parlay. Mm. Now, guess what hit last night? Odell Beckham, two t Gill's all proud of himself. Josh, everybody who took that bet on that chain is all proud of himself. And I don't know who did. He scored two. He did. That hit. Or, or maybe I'm looking no, at. No, I thought he only maybe, scored one. He scored a big one in the second. Oh, half. you know what it is? I'm looking at the Chubb scored the other touchdown. I oh, think, see, you know what it is? Though. Now I'm looking at the wrong because I'm in PA. Yeah. So PA. So it doesn't cash over. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm looking at the wrong thing. So Jersey doesn't cash over? Josh, what, what happened? So Jersey doesn't cash over. Now I have to cross the border. My, my account is different. So what happened is I had equal money on bets in PA and Jersey last night. Mm-hmm. And what I thought was when I looked at the account, not the bet slip itself, that the money kicked in. So what happens is I must have to go over to Jersey to collect any payment. And if I hit a bet in Jersey and I now log in in PA, it won't show up. Oh, okay. Like, it won't show up as a registered bet. Gotcha. Oh, that's brutal, man. That is absolutely brutal. 609-403-0973. you see how that works? Yes. Dan from EHT. Maybe the Eagles should try McCown in the first quarter Sunday. Wentz is pathetic early. Plays like he's never played before. Yeah, well, that, that's that's not the idea. The idea is to get your, your franchise guy going. And Doug and he need to figure it out. I mean, seriously. And, and you, you can't have, you know, holding penalties. They've had holding penalties, stall drives. It's amazing. The, these first couple of weeks, and it, this is like it every year, when these teams start out on drives and get behind the chains with an offensive line penalty or like an illegal motion, whatever it is, it, it's so hard to make up that yardage. Yeah. It really, especially when you don't have a guy, like they might not have a Deshaun or an Alshon in the game this week. That's true. So this, Without you know, having this, this somebody say like that, Amalo needs to freaking quit holding pe- uh, people, or just get out. <laughs> okay. Dan follows up. So far, the Eagles' backs have gotten into the second level maybe twice. They are killing Wentz. He needs some help from the running backs. Well, Rolls did well in the first game, but we saw him on maybe three times against Atlanta. What? Sanders had one a touchdown called back in the week one because of a penalty. Yeah, well, they Remember? didn't. Need, yeah, I, I know, and and I needed that for the cover, but outside of that. I mean, I, I think you look at one play that jumps out, yes. Yeah, Odell Beckham Jr. only had one touchdown. No, I know. It's the 89-yarder. See, yeah. see, I didn't even think to check the box because I get a text from Gil in the morning, my FanDuel account updated, and I get a text from him saying, hope you guys took that, hope you took OBJ, OB, hope you took OBJ 2TD and Browns win. Why would Gil text? Is that a coherent text? Hope you took OBJ two TD and Browns. Why would he win. say that if there weren't two TDs? I think he messed up, Thinking and that's the Browns score two TDs, and Odell Beckham has one of them. No, he says hope you took. I mean, he messed up the text, but hope you took OBJ two. T- that's what happened. So that set off a chain of miscommunication. You, so you think you were going on bad information from Gil? And the fact that I didn't realize that my account, I understood I need to cash a bet, but I thought my account <laughs> would update. Like, I thought my account would update on an app, not brick and mortar over state lines. So, yeah, unbelievable. All right. Now, now I understand what's Glad happening. we got that cleared up. When the Eagles trade for Ramsey, do we let him wear B-Docs number 20? That's Evan on the text board. Yeah, not, not happening. No and no. No and no. Listen, I would, I'm not adverse to trading for Jalen Ramsey at all. You know, if the look, Eagles think that they can work a deal out for Jalen Ramsey and keep him here, then I'm all for making a trade. See, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm blanching at him now because of all the stuff that has been happening with Antonio Brown. These guys that just demand all this attention, I don't want them anymore. I know he's a very talented player. I get it. And maybe if some other team gets him, his head gets right, good for him. But I don't see it. I think the guy is just a, he's a, he's a lunatic. How much of it do you think is just trying to get out of a bad situation? Well, I mean, so that's where we are today. So guys just misbehave to just get out of where they are. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, okay, great. You can get out. Of that doesn't mean you have to come here. No, no, no. I, I understand. You know what I mean? I understand. I mean, I understand Miami is, is an absolute dumpster fire. Well, Jacksonville. Fire. No, Miami is. Right. That's a dumpster fire. So you they, don't they, blame Minka Fitzpatrick? Well, I mean, he didn't go, go about it in these kind of ways. He's not ch- He wasn't, like, well, trying no, to I, fight his coach I, on the I get it. was he? Wouldn't you try to fight Doug Marone? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, you know, Minka Fitzpatrick knows the team's basically tanking, which is incredibly obvious. Right. And he wants no part of it. Right. So... He requests a trade. He's not going out and acting like an idiot. I don't want. I don't want any more idiots. I'm sorry. Ah oh, man. I, at this point, as long as you're not hurting people, I'll, I'll take any idiot you can find. Well, yeah. I mean, listen. I, I'm at a point right now in my life where I don't care what you think, and I don't care what you say. 
I care what you do, but I don't care what you think and say. Unless you're physically going out or you're, you know what I mean, like you're hurting people, I don't give a crap. Go ahead, be a lunatic. You want to say ridiculous stuff on TV, go ahead and do that. It's inc- Nobody that's ranting and raving on some 90-second video on Twitter is going to ruin my day anymore. All right?